In this video, we're going to put ChatGPT to the ultimate test. We're going to see if it can assist us in building a scalable Twitter application. This application should be capable of scaling to potentially millions of users, and it should also include all of the basic functionality of Twitter. So the most challenging part about building a scalable Twitter application is likely going to be the home timeline portion of the application. And that's basically the part where when you go to your homepage in Twitter, you can see a list of tweets from all of the people that you're following. So that's the part of the architecture that we're going to focus on. So let's take some time to actually go over the architecture. Now, all of the information that I have about Twitter's architecture, I got from a presentation done by Twitter. I'm not exactly sure how up to date this architecture is, but at the time of the presentation, it was Twitter's solution to making this feature of the application scalable. So let's get into that architecture. So let's imagine that when a user sends a tweet to Twitter's servers, it's represented by this envelope. And this envelope is going to contain the user ID of the person that sent the tweet, as well as the tweet body. This payload will likely hit a load balancer and eventually end up at this write API service here. And when it arrives at this write API service, the write API is going to check to see if the user ID exists in a user table in a MySQL database. And if the user does exist, it's going to insert the tweet into a tweet table in this same database. After inserting the tweet, we'll get a tweet ID, which is now part of our payload. This payload will then be added to this queue as a message, and that message is going to contain the user ID, the tweet body, and the tweet ID. The message will eventually be consumed by this fanout service, and the fanout service is going to be responsible for distributing this tweet to the home timelines of all of the users that follow the user that sent the tweet. So what this fanout service is going to do is it's going to actually send a request to another service, this social graph service, and it's going to give the social graph service the user ID of the person that sent the tweet, and it's going to ask the social graph service to query all of the users that follow the user that sent the tweet. The social graph service will then return the list of the users that follow the user that sent the tweet to the fanout service. The fanout service will then start the process of appending the tweet to every user User that follows the user that sent the tweet. Now every user on Twitter's home timeline is stored in this massive Redis cache. So within this Redis cache, every user ID represents a key, and the value pointed to by that key is a list containing all of the tweets in the user's home timeline. And for every user, there's only a maximum of 800 tweets that can be contained within this list. And the actual list doesn't contain the tweet body, it just contains the tweet ID and the user ID. And maybe some metadata as well, but we're not going to worry about that for this. So the fanout service with the list of users that follow the person that sent the tweet is going to append the tweet to the home timeline of every user from that list. The fanout service is also going to be responsible for storing the tweet body in memcached. And memcached is going to have a key value pair structure where the key is the tweet ID and the value is the body of the tweet. Now this is the flow for a user sending a tweet that we want to build. And this flow makes it so that when a user actually loads their home timeline, that list of tweets doesn't need to get loaded from disk, which would result in a user's home timeline loading slowly. The user's home timeline gets read directly from this in-memory cache, which dramatically increases the speed at which a user is able to view his or her home timeline. So now let's see if ChatGPT can help us to build this architecture. So we're going to start with building out individual services before composing them together to form the overall architecture. And all of the messages that I use to get ChatGPT to generate the code and the configuration, I will leave in the description below. So let's start with the write API service. This service is going to need to integrate with a relational database to persist the tweets. So we'll start by asking ChatGPT to create the MySQL 
little init script for us. This script should contain our database schema. This schema will need to contain a user table and a tweet table, where the user ID column of the tweet table should be a foreign key that references the user table's ID. We call this a one-to-in or one-to-many relationship. In other words, a user can have multiple or in tweets. Next, we'll ask ChatGPT to create the service that will integrate with the database. The service will just have one HTTP post method endpoint that the Twitter front end can send tweet requests to. This service will first need to check to see if the user ID in the request actually exists, and if it does, it will then insert the tweet into the tweet table. After the tweet is persisted, the service will then put that tweet data onto a queue to later be consumed by the downstream fanout service. So we'll also need to create a social graph service. And this service should simply return a list of user IDs for every user that follows the person that sent the tweet. So that means that we need to keep track of a network graph. So basically the user's follower to followee relationships. Now Twitter uses an in-house tool called FlockDB to store the social graph of its users. And this tool is basically built on top of MySQL in a way that takes advantage of MySQL's B tree indexing. But it's a bit unrealistic to expect ChatGPT to build this out for us, so we're just going to use MySQL's basic functionality. So we'll create a DB with one table that we'll call relationship, and this table will basically have an ID column, a column for source ID, and a column for destination ID. And the source ID will be the follower, and the destination ID will be the user ID of the person being followed or the followee. And since right now we're only concerned with getting a list of people that follow the user that sent the tweet, we'll index the destination ID since that is the user that sent the tweet. This will allow us to query all rows with the destination ID equal to the user ID of the person that sent the tweet in logarithmic time. And then we'll just return the source ID for all of those rows, and that will be the list of people that follow the person that sent the tweet. Now, the service for this is a lot less complicated. It'll simply have a git endpoint with the request param tweeter ID, and it will just return the list of user IDs from the query. The next service that we'll want to create is the fanout service. This service is going to be a consumer service, so it's going to consume the messages from the RabbitMQ queue. It's then going to take the user ID from that message and send a request to the social graph service to get all of the users that follow that user ID. After it has all of the followers for the user that sent the tweet, for each user ID or each follower, it's going to check Redis for the key, which is the user ID of the follower. And then it's going to update that user ID's home timeline with the tweet ID and the user ID of the person that sent the tweet. And then it's going to store the actual body of the tweet in memcached. So remember, we aren't storing the actual tweet body in the user's home timeline on Redis. We're storing the tweet body in memcached. Lastly, we'll need to ask ChatGPT to create a read API for us to hit so that we can get the user's timelines from Redis. And following that, it's time to finally integrate all of the services. Now, all of the infrastructure code that I use to integrate all of these services, I'll leave a link to in the description below. I'll use Minikube to deploy all of the services to a Minikube cluster on my local machine. And following that, I'll apply all of the configuration files to the cluster. This will deploy all of the services to our cluster. And once the services are deployed, I'll run some operation scripts to populate our Redis and our MySQL databases with data. This will even create a bunch of follower to followee relationships as well as pre-populate all of the users' home timelines. And it's now time to test the tweet and home timeline functionality. Now, since the before mentioned scripts already pre-populate all of the user's home timelines in Redis, we should be able to send a request to the read API to get a specific user's home timeline. And as you can see, we're able to get the home timeline pre-populated with a bunch of tweets from the users that this user follows. Now, if we send a tweet as one of these users that the user follows, it should show up on this user's home timeline. And as you can see, it does 
indeed show up at the end of this user's home timeline. And for good measure, let's go ahead and do one more. And as you can see, it seems that everything is working as expected. And that is Twitter's architecture using ChatGPT. If you found this video interesting, go ahead and leave a like and subscribe if you're interested in content like this, and I'll see you in the next one.